Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. The Horrific Afterlife of the Spanish Corpse Queen Throughout history, there have been a number of examples of kings and queens being exhumed, or even left unburied for centuries. The Queen of England, Catherine of Valois, following her death, was left inside of a coffin in Westminster Abbey for around 400 years, and many people, over the years, would visit and tamper with her remains. Catherine had been the wife of Henry V, and also can be considered the great-grandmother of the Tudor dynasty. Her remains were touched and even kissed over the centuries, until they were treated with dignity many centuries after her death. People at the time considered it lucky and blessed to touch the remains of a queen, but this today would be considered disgusting and shocking. But there was one Spanish wife of a king whose remains were ordered to be dug up on the orders of her husband, and then the dead body of the queen consort was paraded throughout the coronation. But what is the horrific story of the terrible afterlife of the Spanish princess exhumed by her husband? Inez de Castro was a Gaelican noblewoman and a courtier, and she was born in 1325. She was the daughter of Pedro Fernandez de Castro, the lord of Lemos and Saria. Her family descended from Gaelican and Portuguese nobility, and she was very well connected to the Castilian royal family by illegitimate means, however. Her stepmother was Infantra Beatrix of Portugal, who was the youngest daughter of Alfonso of Portugal, the lord of Portalaga. Her grandmother was the illegitimate daughter of Sancho IV of Castile. Inez arrived in Portugal in 1340, around the age of 15, and she then became a lady-in-waiting, to Constance of Castile, who had recently married Prince Peter, the heir to the Portuguese throne. The prince, however, quickly shifted his attention to Inez, and he fell in love with her. He began to have an affair with Inez, and he neglected and turned his back on his wife, which was causing a great amount of strain with Castile. Peter loved Inez, and the problem almost brought the exiled Castilian nobility into power. However, she and her brothers became rather powerful. Like many kings over the centuries, if a daughter or sister caught the eye of a prince or king, the family would benefit also, and would be given wealth and financial riches. Inez's brothers would become trusted advisers to Prince Peter, and they would also become close friends with him. But the King of Portugal... Alfonso IV did not like the fact his son was having an affair with Inez de Castro, and he saw what he was doing to his wife as shameful. He was completely ignoring her, but Peter the Prince was in love. But the king did not like Inez's influence on his son, and he also believed that this romance would just blow over and be nothing more than an affair. But this did not happen. In 1345, Constance of Castile, Peter's wife, died, and the King of Portugal would try to negotiate a new marriage for his son to bring a strong alliance with a European power and nation. But Peter would refuse to marry anyone other than Inez, and he claimed that the only woman who would be eligible to be his wife and princess was Inez de Castro. At the time, Peter's legitimate son, the future King Fernand I of Portugal, would be a frail child. However, Peter and Inez had a number of illegitimate children. These all seemed very healthy and were thriving, which shocked many. There was a considerable amount of discontent inside of the royal court because of this, and there was a worry that Peter was falling too heavily under Castilian influence. But Alfonso, the fourth the king, would go further, and he would try to split the two lovers up. He banished Inez from court, following Constance's death, but Peter would stick with her and stay by her side, as he told her he loved her. Alfonso went further and tried very hard to keep the two lovers apart, and he even ordered Inez's death and execution. A group of assassins and executioners went to the monastery of Santa Clara, a villa in Combraia, and here Inez had been held prisoner. But whilst here, 
The executioners slaughtered Inez, and they cut her head clean off in front of her small child, brutally massacring and slaying the prince's lover. Peter would hear of her murder, and he made it his job to hunt down Inez's killers, and he would manage to capture two of them in 1361. He had them executed by ripping out their hearts in public, and he said that they didn't deserve to have a heart as they ripped out his. Peter would become the King of Portugal a few years earlier, and he then claimed that he had married in secret Inez, and that she was the lawful Queen of Portugal. The only proof was his word. However, during 1385, the crisis of the royal succession, evidence was gathered that showed the Pope had refused Peter's request to recognise the marriage of him and Inez, and to then legitimise their children, and make them the heirs to the Portuguese throne. This, therefore, strengthened the claim of the children who weren't born to Inez that Peter had. However, what was shocking was what Peter did next to Inez's body and remains after he became king. It was claimed that he ordered Inez's body to be exhumed from her grave, bearing in mind she had been slaughtered and brutally killed. It would not have been the best state. It was said that Peter had her body dug up, clothed, and then sat on the throne, and he ordered the entire royal court to swear allegiance to their new queen, the dead body of Inez de Castro. It was said, the King Peter caused the body of his beloved Inez to be disinterred and placed on a throne, adorned with the diadem and royal robes, and required all the nobility of the kingdom to approach and kiss the helm of her garment, rendering her, when dead, that homage which she had not received in life. Some claim that the story that she was coronated and made a queen was a legend, that she had a post-mortem coronation, and that this story later appeared a few centuries later. However, what isn't as disputed is the fact she was dug up, and people were made to swear allegiance to a dead body. Inez de Castro and Peter I had four children, and these were all legitimised by Peter. The first was a son named Alfonso, that died shortly after birth. A second son was John, the Duke of Valencia de Campos, who would claim the throne, along with a third son named Dennis, who would also claim the throne. The youngest child was Beatrice, who later married the first cousin of Albuquerque, and she was the great-grandmother of Ferdinand II of Aragon, and therefore was an ancestor of all the Spanish monarchs. But the story of Inez de Castro's exhumation and subsequent coronation after her death is a story which is captivating. It is a story of love and tragedy, in which one man's heart was shattered by the horrific murder of his lover. Inez de Castro was never supposed to fall in love with the prince and heir, and their love had disastrous consequences and led to crazy behaviour at the royal court. Thank you for watching and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.